Hello everyone, and welcome to the HILI channel here on Going Local TV. I'm your host, Melissa Farrell, and today's topic is the Economic Development Task Force. I'm joined today by two special guests, the president of the HILI, Terry Lisa Maselli. How are you, Terry? Good, good. Welcome back. Thank you. We have you. a new guest in the studio, the leader of the Economic Development Task Force, Joe Campolo. How are you, Joe? I'm doing great, thank you. Good to have you here today. All right, Terry, I want to know how the Long Island HILI's Economic Development Task Force began and what its mission is. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, I want to say it was back in probably 2016 that one of the things that Joe, I think, helped us out with um, tremendously is really understanding we had to play to our strengths, which is we're very action oriented. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're an organization that I think is really good at when we set up a task force, not only having a lot of discussion about, you know, what has to happen, but really making some things happen. So it started, as I said, in 2016. Um, Joe really inspired us to look at a template in Stony Brook to say, you know, what are they doing? They're looking at, you know, what their impact is in economic development. We did the same with the Long Island Innovation Park. And then at some point after we went through what, what we called a sustainability study with the Suffolk IDA and James Limba Planning, we realized that I think the park is part of a much larger ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And there's so much economic development that's so important really to advocate for on Long Island. It morphed into a much, much larger uh, mission of let's take a look at the projects on Long Island that we know have to be pushed forward. Yeah. All right, so Joe, what is the mission of the task force? You know, business people always um, operate under the tenant that <clears throat> if you want to be successful, you should surround yourself with successful people, right? And so we get that as the business community. And Long Island as a whole, for, for better or for worse, was never really viewed as a business hub. You know, it's viewed as a place for great schools, it's viewed as a place for beaches, but never really was marketed as a place to come and really grow and thrive a business. And as Terry and I started to look around at Long Island, first of all, we realized we're sitting on a jewel in the uh, innovation park. It used to be the industrial park. And what we realized is it was the second largest industrial park in the country, second only to Silicon Valley. And then when we studied Silicon Valley and what made it Silicon Valley, we realized that it was the jobs it created, the partnerships that it had with Stanford University and other universities, and really the high quality tradable sector type of environment was there. So we did a really deep dive into the park and, and realized we have here on Long Island jobs that are above the national average in terms of quality of jobs here on Long Island. And so then we started peeling back even deeper and realizing, wow, nobody knows about this. Yeah. Like nobody knows about it. it people, are, people are complaining about taxes and potholes, which I understand, but nobody's really realizing that they're betting on success by being on Long Island. So we took it as our mission to go out and educate the business community that Long Island is winning. Long Island's a successful place. It's a great place, not just to raise a family, which our, all of our families came out from Brooklyn and Queens in the city because yep. they wanted to raise their family and then they would commute into the city. It doesn't have to happen anymore. Yep. The great jobs are here. The great opportunities here. And now the world is realizing it. You know, in our innovation park, it's 58% tradable sectors, which means 58% of the business is coming from outside the state and the country. Okay, that's remarkable. You look at what's going on in Brookhaven National Lab. We won an international competition to get an electron ion collider here that's gonna bring $2 billion in economic development to Long Island. Nobody's talking about it. So what we really did was get together thought leaders from all different verticals across the, uh, across the island and make them advocates for, you know, Long Island is succeeding and Long Island is winning. And Long Island is not just a great place for schools and beaches, but a great place to have your business. And I think we're, we're making a lot of progress on that. I agree with that. How do you get the members of HILI informed about the resource available to government and also about the impending legislation that's happened or is going to happen? Well, Going Local TV, I'll give you a plug. Right? I appreciate Going Local that, TV is yeah. one of those. But we have, we have a lot of different forums. I mean, there, there are best attended forums because, again, people want to surround themselves with success. So we have, we have, uh, we have forums during the year, live forums. We have um, quarterly, usually by Zoom, quarterly task force updates. And then every single day, and you know, Terry's the, the, the fiercest warrior we have on Long Island for Business. Every single day, she's out there you know, banging on the tables and making sure everybody understands the great stuff that's going on. I love that. Terry, what are some of the transformational projects that the task force identified and also advocated for here on Long Island? Sure, I mean, you know, absolutely, as Joe said, started with the Long Island Innovation Park and then let us 
um, to really look at, I think, a few things. One is, you know, where we're conscious of whatever project we're advocating for or whatever step, next step we're taking to help that project, that it's um, across the aisle, bipartisan. Um, I think it's, you know, the question that we just asked about government leaders and government officials, probably the best thing that we do to move something forward. There's no talk about who's voting for who, who's voting for when. It's how do we get this project done? So. From the park, we began to look at things like Sands Resort, right, which is uh, can add over 15,000 jobs, right, right here on Long yeah. Island in Nassau County to projects like uh, downtown Patchogue, mm -hmm. um, Shoregate, Station Yards, and Ronkonkoma, because we at the HIALI also realize how absolutely critical it is to keep our kids on Long Island, yes. right, and give young professionals an opportunity to live on Long Island. So these projects are important, and you know we've we've talked about if we continue, which we will, to do what we're doing within the next five to ten years, our kids will have an opportunity yeah. and will want to stay here. Exactly, and that's why I think these projects are so very important. We also have a really good relationship with the Long Island Regional Planning Council, right. so it's led by uh, John Cameron. Um, and we're, we're really looking at some of the projects that they're deeming projects of regional significance, right? So Midway Crossing is probably a great example, $2.8 billion project that we really help get started in terms of um, many of the much of the opposition that they were finding. So those are the types of projects, and I'm sure there'll be many more in the future. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. All right, Joe, um, speaking back on the point of the Innovation Park in Hop Hawk, I know it has the, nor the largest in the Northeast, correct, largest Northeast, and has an economic output over $13 billion. How does the task force help sustain its growth? By advocating for it. I mean, what, what, what do businesses need? They need to be informed, educated, and advocated for. And up until, um, you know, our task force and really what the HILI has been doing over the past six to eight years is – even with elected officials, nobody from the business community was holding them accountable. So you would see campaigns being run all the time here on Long Island. And again, it was school districts, taxes, potholes, all those things are important to quality of life. But what I think we've done really well is put the business folks' voice on the ballot yeah. to make sure that they understand that all of those great things that we want come at a cost and they come on the backs of business mm -hmm. and here we have the innovation park and it was you know a crown jewel that was just left there that was coal it needed to have pressure on it but 55,000 high paying jobs come out of our park 1400 companies are there that's one in 20 jobs on Long Island is coming out of the the park and nobody was advocating on its behalf and once we did amazing things happened yep. right people said oh i didn't know this existed isn't that <laughs> yeah. interesting yep. Right. And so then you follow that synergy to say, OK, now we want to make sure that the other projects of regional significance are getting as much advocacy as the park got. Because the park w went for years, um, you know, where it didn't get any notoriety. Yep. And now it is. I mean, now nationally they're talking about it. Every elected official out there knows because we've pounded it in their head that it's the second largest industrial park, second yep. only to Silicon Valley. But that's really important for Long Island. That's not us. That's Long Island. True. The Long Islanders built that. I mean, it's an amazing story of how that park was built. And it should be out there. And people should feel proud. And should, people should realize it's, it's a success story. And they're doing business with successful people in a successful place. Yep. It's not about just Silicon Valley. It's our innovation park as well. So we're super proud about it. Speaking of that point, um, how has the task force helped build and support awareness of the MacArthur Long Island expansion? So yeah. I, I will um, say that I'm not speaking out of school, that my very good friend, uh, Supervisor Angie Carpenter, would say that when they were trying to attract a new airlines, Breeze Airways, to the Long Island MacArthur Airport, they came to us. Again, we have a reputation of an action-oriented organization. Yep. We roll up our sleeves and we try and get things done. And they said the challenge is we can't penetrate into the business community, and Breeze wants to know that there are going to be butts and seats. They're going to want to know if they have these flights. Is the travel for businesses going to be utilized. You know, so we mobilized our forces together. Terry got a survey out to the business community. They would have been happy with, I think, 25 or 30 responses. We got over 500 responses oh, from the wow. business community. And we showed Breeze, we were able to show Breeze through our survey response 
that if they put certain flights into certain destinations, there would be tens of millions of dollars in revenue over the years to them. Wow. And that's that's what lynched a big part of them coming there. Almost, it's the only thing coming there. Yeah. It's a great airport. You know, it's 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 perfectly situated for all that model. But what we were able to do is show that the business community was interested in those flights. That's amazing. And we're super proud of that. Yeah, I can see that. All right, my last question is for you, Jill. I'm going to read it to you because it's a long one. Are you ready for this? Can you handle it? All right. How does the task force work with business and government leaders to identify challenges and explore existing and emerging strategies to support Long Island business and the quality of life? So it's a great question. That's exactly what the task force is about, right, is we're nonpartisan. We, we, we don't just talk and, uh, and then walk away shaking our heads and saying it is you what do it, it is. Sleeps up. We get it done. I'll give you a perfect example. One of the challenges to development inside the Innovation Park has been the lack of sewer capacity. Sewers on Long Island, we're an island. Yeah. Our water quality is critical. And what we identified during one of our meetings is there's not enough sewer capacity to get done what we need to get done, right? And so this one got on the mission <laughs> of she was going to make sure every month she was going to have meetings and hold everybody accountable to make sure here are the deliverables, did we get it done, okay? And HIA and Terry were just awarded by uh, uh, um, Long Island Contractors Association just last week for her work on the getting the sewers implemented inside the Innovation Park, which is a critical, critical piece of infrastructure spending. So, but, but the amazing thing is, and my hat goes off to the elected officials on Long Island, you know, all this noise in Washington and all this noise, we have the greatest elected officials here on Long Island for the most part, yes. but we do. They, they get on our meetings themselves. The town oh, supervisors get on the meetings themselves. They don't staff it out. Angie Carpenter's there. Ed Wareheim's there. They don't staff it out. They want to hear the issue. They empower their people to get the challenges settled. And then Terry and her team just follow up and continue to make sure that the loops get closed. So we think it's a really important piece. Look, there are a lot of great other organizations out there. Libby's a great organization. Long Island Association is a great organization. And we can't operate the way we do without their support. Yeah. But we are really super proud at what we're able to deliver from HILI. All right, Tyre, my last question for you is, how, what's your secret and stuff done at the HILI? How do you get all this done? What is your secret? Tell us everything. Yeah, so my father really once did tell me that um, – Genuinely, you need to surround yourself with great people mm-hmm. who who just will take you to another level, number one. I mean, we are by far, and as Joe said, there's a lot of great trade organizations out there. We work with all of them, but by far I feel we're the most collaborative, and we just have an ability to get the right people in the room yeah. at the right time and keep it consistently going and holding people accountable. And I think that's one of the reasons why we've been able to get so much done. Yep so much done so quickly and people will stop us and we've had this conversation and say like how do you do all that you do it's because we're surrounded by really good people like joe and our board members and phenomenal staff and we collaborate with anyone love that anyone i love that thank you all for all of your hard work if our viewers want to know more about this task force how can they find information on it where they find where do they go sure i mean they come right to the hili so you know our website is hia dash li dot org um they can call us 631-543-5355 and we'll um get them involved somehow that's perfect thank you all for watching stay tuned for more check out all the rest of the videos we have here on going local tv thanks for watching